Welcome to another edition of our webinar series 2023. Uh, so this is the fourth webinar on the series. Uh, this is on November 8th, 2023 at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. So today we're going to talking about our new version of Symerics, which includes the optimization. So our topic is going to be optimization of pumps using Symerics MP, Symerics MP plus. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Dr. Charan Srinivasan, and uh, I'll be joined with uh, with my, I'll be joined today with my colleague, um, Vignesh, Dr. Vignesh Jagannathan. So he'll be demoing the capability of how to use the optimizer uh, to optimize the centrifugal pump. Uh, before that, we just uh, go through the outline and uh, talk about some of the um, introductory slides. So I'll first kind of give you an introduction about Symerics, uh, this version six, what it contains, then we will go through this optimization demo. And uh, we have three case studies that we have done so far. Uh, we have done multiple studies, but uh, uh, three of the uh, those which we can share publicly um, with with you guys. So we'll talk about those three case studies, and then uh, we'll show you the demo uh, results that we get uh, out of the demo setup today, and then uh, talk about the up upcoming uh, webinar. Um, I hope everybody can still hear me. Um, and then uh, we'll have some questions and answers. So first talking about Symerics. Um, so we have four branches. Uh, our headquarters is in Seattle. Uh, it's a suburb in Seattle called Bellevue. Um, we have uh, the second office here in uh, Michigan in the Detroit area. Uh, and then we have an office in Germany uh, near Stuttgart in Rotenburg. And uh, in India, we have an office in Bangalore. So we are engineers and researchers who want to produce path paving innovative technologies in the world of CFT or CAE uh, in general. So what we've done so far is to provide engineers with the robust, accurate, fast and automated CA tools for virtual analysis and design. And uh, so how do we manage to do it? Uh, we have a four pronged approach, I would say. So first is automated meshing. So we have a proprietary binary tree meshing algorithm that automates the meshing process. Uh, it can handle very complex geometries uh, and it can capture the finer details um, with ease. So it does this automatically. And we also have a high fidelity, fidelity mesh with a very quick turnaround in preparing the simulation model. So this automating meshing can help us in uh, quick model preparation for, for meshing for complex models. And uh, to, to add to it, we have a template-driven user-friendly workflow. So the templates are essentially uh, what makes it very easy to set up uh, a model. So we have templates for varied, various different of types of pumps, compressors. Uh, we have also general um, templates for vehicles, for piston cooling, and several other applications. So the templates enable a shorter learning curve for users and uh, it can uh, be easy to use even for design engineers who don't have a CFD background. It also eliminates dependencies on high-end development and manpower resources. So uh, it kind of, uh, you don't need to do a research and development for every time you're going to set up a, a model for a pump or, or for example, uh, uh, external airflow through uh, around a vehicle, for example. Also, the other thing that uh, we are strong with is moving domains and dynamics. So we can model complex translations and rotational motions as uh, as uh, demonstrated with different types of positive displacement pumps that we do. And we can also model leakages and micron sized gaps very accurately. So we have several different bearing templates as well, so which can help us um, model these very small gaps very accurately. Uh, on the whole, we are very fast, accurate, and robust. Uh, fast in terms of convergence of the physics. Uh, we do various physics like cavitations, multiphase, uh, conjugate heat transfer, etc. And uh, we are multiple times faster than other general purpose CFD codes. And uh, this has been validated across different industry verticals for several different applications. Uh, in terms of the software suite, uh, Symmetric CFD is. is uh, is, is the big one where we have uh, multi-phase models, uh, say volume of fluid cavitation, we have e-transfer turbulence, and now we have integration with several different CAD and uh, 
other uh, other CA packages like Orca 3D, Creo, SolidWorks, CF Turbo, Cases, GTI, Fusion, Rhino, SimScale, NX, etc. And uh, the second second arm is the Simex FEA. Uh, we have been develop, developing our in-house FEA code, and that is going to be uh, mainly concentrated on coupling uh, tight coupling CFD and FEA problems. And the third one, which is the Simex OPT, which is the Simex optimizer, is is what we will be focusing on today. So this is to kind of combine both CFD and optimization in one platform, and to produce uh more uh aggressive and uh, effective designs for the customers so what does simex version 6 contain so i'll just give you a br brief overview of some of the things that are there uh in terms of the templates and modules so we have a new optimization template uh we have a new ac acoustic template uh we have a very enhanced version of the general gear template uh we have a pid uh process controller uh template and a turbo post template. So let's go go through each one. For the optimization, uh, now it's embedded inside the Simeric software. So a picture here shows kind of the workflow. We'll kind of describe that a little bit more in detail um, uh, today in this webinar. So we can monitor the progress as usual in our inside our GUI. So we don't need to have any external to tool to do this. Um, and different runs uh, that you obtain can be loaded very easily back into our software to visualize it. The framework is based on a Bayesian optimization. Um, so it's, it's designed for a black box, black, black box functions and widely used in different areas like machine learning, computer graphics, etc. So compare this with other optimization methods. The advantages we see is it requires fewer model evaluations and, uh, and that is a very big advantage for CFD. Typically CFD takes a little longer time to to run compared to other uh, other processes, so you want to kind of reduce the number of uh, evaluations that you would re require to get uh, better designs. So that's why we chose this approach. So this is uh, how the GUI right now looks like uh, inside Simerics. So we have uh, you can see the optimization uh, as an extra module, and then you can set up the optimizer inside our uh, software. And uh, you can visualize the convergence of your model. Uh, you can also visualize also the results that you're getting from your designs and you can load multiple designs to kind of process this information. And uh, I just show you um, a, a plot of uh, the results that we typically obtain. So we will do a bunch of DOE runs and then we will let the optimizer kind of go through a different array of runs to determine which is the most optimal point based on your um, objective function. So uh, I'll discuss, um, you know, some of the results we get from some case studies, but typically what we are seeing is very aggressive designs, uh, improving our efficiencies quite, um, quite dramatically. Um, so these are things that, uh, I think we are uh, positively noticing for our optimizer. And, uh, that's something that, uh, that is, uh, going to be helpful for the industry in general. So the next one is acoustics model. Um, so again, it's it's a separate module now that's available. Uh, so you can add that, and uh, we have multiple uh, model there. So I describe this here. Um, so the acoustic analysis models, post processing of flow solutions to achieve acoustic prediction. So the source models, the broadband source model we have, and the lightal stress model. So you can see those two here, and the source and transmission model. We have this William Hawkins model. Uh, so this is the third one here. So these are the different models that are available. And uh, we have also been um, validating these acoustics for a pump noise, for vehicle noise, um, et cetera. So this is something, again, we, uh, we will be taking up in a uh, following webinar. So um, I think I show some uh, simple results here that we have obtained for, for a drone. Um, so we are looking at the noise levels, the SPL, uh, decibels. So we are looking at simulation and comparisons uh, with that of experiment. You can see the favorable comparisons of that. Um, the other one is this broadband noise source uh, for the vehicle uh, flow around the vehicle. Um, so that is something that, again, we can simulate now with this noise modeling. Uh, for the fan, uh, for the uh, for this uh, model predictions, we have some comparisons. So we have uh, some 
experimental data that we are trying to validate with uh, with our Sumerics predictions. And so you can see the experimental data green line, uh, the green solid line. So there is a band here uh, and the solid line is basically kind of going between the band and the Sumerics predictions are somewhere here. I think uh, we are still working on this. Um, it's, it's something that we're going to be publishing soon, but I think the results so far that we have obtained looks um, even for using a RANS model with noise modeling seems um, very, very promising. Uh, so next one is the general gear template. Um, so the general gear template, uh, I think we have had this now for a year or so, but we have had add, um, add, added a lot of uh, key features here and now it's kind of a very uh, easy tool to use and it's uh, it's being very um, actively used in the in the automotive and uh, the hydraulic industry. So we can do internal and external gears. So here you're showing a picture of the, the planetary gear set, which has both internal and external gears. Uh, we can handle spur or helical gear. And uh, now the helical gear angles and uh, uh, all you need to do is provide the CAD and we can automatically figure out the angle, the number of teeth, etc. So everything's automated. We can do multiple gears connecting together uh, setup it, uh, set setup of this is very automatic or automated. We don't need to uh, babysit the process too much. So you just need to enter the basic inputs necessary as we do with uh, several different templates of ours and uh, the mesh will be generated and uh, you will be uh, pretty confident that the mesh is going to run fine if it gets generated. Uh, we also have a boundary mesh, uh, boundary layer mesh capability. So on the boundary cells, we can have uh, essentially very small cells and that can grow to a coarser cell in the bulk. So, so this kind of enables us to capture the oil film that uh, typically can uh, occur in this, uh, on these gears. Uh, we can use for um, machines with uh, similar topology. So for example, uh, screw compressors, um, uh, you know, machines of those categories can also be uh, utilize uh, the general gear can be utilized for meshing those machines as well. Uh, we can also deform the general fluid mesh based on the solid deformation. So this is something that again um, uh, is an extra feature that we have added recently. Uh, let me. Uh, yeah, here we are kind of having the multiple different um, templates that we, I mean, multiple different uh, locations or uh, applications in which the gear mesh is getting utilized. So a gear box, um, you have this uh, multiple gears where your oil is jetting on it. Uh, you have helical gears um, and, and screw machines, like I mentioned before. Um, so the next template or module is this PID controller, uh, proportional integral derivative controller. Uh, so I think many of us are aware of uh, what this is, uh, what this does. Essentially, if you want to model the behavior of a real controller in the system, uh, you can use this to kind of do the same. It's a numerical way of mimicking a real controller in a system. Uh, you can, optimizing the parameters of a controller is something that um, uh, you, you can use this to achieve. And uh, you can also help adjust the input to get a desired output. is quite useful when you are kind of uh, chasing a particular number based on um, some, some control that you want to get in your system. So the final one is the turbo post. Uh, again, it's a separate module that is now available. Uh, so this is to kind of visualize uh, your results coming out of your say centrifugal pump or centrifugal type of devices. So we have a meridional view. So kind of uh, visualize the flow patterns in uh, in, in a more favorable um, kind of view. And uh, we can also do a cascade of blade, blade to blade view, uh, 3D on site or a 2, 2D view. So we can do both of that. Uh, so it's included in relevant templates. Like for example, I mentioned the centrifugal templates. That's a very relevant template for the stubble post. Uh, it can be purchased as a Simex MP add-on. Uh, so if you don't have an MP plus, you can, you can add this um, turbo post onto an MP uh, Symmetrix MP as well. And uh, yeah, it's used typically for the centrifugal axial pumps as well as propellers, um, propellers or drones, uh, those type of applications. So this is a picture showing the this capability. So for example, the centrifugal pump, you kind of add that turbo post and you get this meridional view to visualize the flow pattern. 
uh, you can get this 2D or 3D view of uh, how the flow develops. Uh, so this blade to blade or cascade view in this uh, rotor of this uh, centrifugal pump, basically. So it kind of gives a better, uh, let's say, visualization of how the flow devel uh, develops and evolves in, inside uh, inside your blade, uh, near your blade locations. So I'll stop here and uh, I'll hand it over to my colleague Vignesh and he will talk about the Simex optimization uh, demo and how we set it up typically in our software. So I'll stop my... Um, hi. So, so, can everyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go yes. ahead. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Vignesh. I'm going to present today uh, uh, the steps we uh, follow to um, set, um, set up the optimization in uh, Simerix. So, I'll go through like a couple of slides before I go through the process. So, as you see here, we use like three different software to set up this optimization. Um, so, CF Turbo uh, is the one that's going to generate the design and uh, Simerix is the one that's going to do all the calculations and Python is acting like an interface. So, so in the CF Turbo, first we start creating like, you know, batch file. You first you create the design of the CF Turbo and then we create a batch file. And then the ba that batch file will be used to generate the design suggested by the Simerix. And in Simerix, you saw the Navier Stokes and uh, you find the efficiency and the pressure head and other parameters you need. And uh, and then we have the optimizer uh, in Simerix, which will uh, which uses Bayesian optimization, like uh, Chirant mentioned. Um, so like it, the, the optimizer actually decides the control parameters, like the next parameters, for example, bl blade angles. We are trying to optimize the blade angles, and then it will send it back to CF Turbo. Uh, to generate the next design. So, and the Python is more like a communication uh, channel between these two software. So, the, in the CF Turbo uh, setup, we first so we receive the CAD and then we um, reverse engineer the CAD, or you can start from the scratch, like uh, like the beginning, like the global parameters you can use to design the CF Turbo, sorry, uh, pump model, and then. Um, after that, you can choose the which values need to be optimized. Say, like blade angles uh, needs to be optimized. You can select which blade angles and like, uh, like uh, what not. And then you create a batch file. That's the CF Turbo side. And then in Simeric side, uh, you add the optimizer module, uh, like uh, Chiran showed. And then um, we uh, set up appropriate surfaces that needs to be optimized. For example, like the blades or like the volute and uh, surfaces which yeah, needs to be yeah, selected. Uh, sorry, so does anyone have a question? Okay. Uh, and then you and then you have something called uh, this text file. This text file is what that calls the Python and then enables the communication. So that those are the th three things that need to be set up. In Python side, you need to set up like some appropriate paths, like uh, where are your uh, batch files located and uh, so, and then select the control variables uh, which needs to be like communicated between these two software and then uh, execute the new batch file to generate the new uh, design in the CF Turbo and that will be used by the Simerix. It's more like a communication. So we will just go over like briefly like all these three um, steps. Yeah. So before we get into it, let's just uh, let me just show the base design, uh, the results of the base design. I already ran the simulation for the base design. So so this is the base design. It's a, it's a centrifugal pump. We have this uh, uh, impeller and then like the volute and then uh, uh, the outlet. So we have these volumes, right? So the base design has an efficiency of like you know sixty five percentage which is a, it's a bit low. So we want to optimize that. And then to optimize it, like we are going to try and optimize all the blade angles, six blade angles, like on the hub and shroud, uh, the inlet and the exit angles, and then the wrap angles and the uh, hub and shroud. So there are like uh, six angles in total. So that's what we need to optimize to see if we can get like a higher efficiency, right? So that's the uh, goal. So I'll close the base file and then I have this, uh, here I created these uh, different files, as you can see. The first will start with the CF Turbo file. So CF Turbo, you need to uh, create your design inside the CF Turbo. 
and uh, I'll show the process of how, how we generate the batch file. So, uh, so there is this, so this is the uh, model which we created, like you can even view it in 3D. So this is a model, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna uh, like, you know, select the parameters which needs to be optimized. For that, I need to create a batch file. So I just go here and then like, these are a bunch of options. Right? These are all the parameters which you can optimize like up extent and like everything. So I'm interested in like the blade angles. So I'm just going to select those blade angles. It's like four angles here and then two wrap angles here. So I just select them. So these are the uh, blade angles that needs to be optimized. And then I go to the export options here. I select on, only thing I will be changing is the impeller. So I, uh, the, so I just only want to export the impeller uh, every design change. So that's what I'm selecting. And then like I'm selecting, and then here we have an option. So we have partnership with CF Turbo, so which will um, help us like, you know, generate like, you know, uh, what sort of um, uh, tessellation we want and what's that. Sometimes even we can do meshing inside uh, CF Turbo also. Um, but, but the point is you can select the, you can select the, uh, tessellation of the STL and everything, and then I create add, and then like this is the action that needs to happen every uh, design change. Basically, you come back, come here, uh, generate the impeller STL surfaces using fine uh, setting, and then like you save the batch file. So I'm not going to save it because it's already saved here. So uh, this is the batch file. The batch file has a different extension uh, called CFT batch. So yeah. Uh, so that's it. That is a process we need to do it in do it in the CF Turbo side. Uh, make the model, create the batch file. Be precise. That's it. So and then we close it. So then uh, uh, next step is to go into the uh, Simerix part. Like I'm going to open the Simerix file. So from the base design. So all you need to do is just copy the base design and then like you know add a new module called optimization module. Uh, and then you start like, you know, setting up the optimization module. So here in the optimization module in the current, um, uh, current project file, I'm using 10 uh, runs for design of experiments. Like that will be random, randomly it will just pick the uh, blade angles and then it will run 10 points. And uh, just to get the feel for the uh, variable, like, uh, and then use next 10 runs where the Bayesian optimization happens, like it uses uh, like this DOE runs and then like um, previous runs and then like, you know, uh, slowly tries to optimize the um, um, objective which we give here. Right now we are trying to maximize the uh, efficiency. This plot.ef50 is the efficiency which I uh, uh, declared uh, previously. And then the processing method, like, like you want to like, you know, say the mean value of uh, efficiency because we are running steady state and then we want to take the mean of uh, last few values so that you give those options here. There are other options also which you can use, but, and then like these, are, these are the six, um, you know, variables which needs to be optimized. Like Shrenth mentioned, it's the uh, Bayesian optimization. Uh, it's a, like a black box. It doesn't need to know what it is optimizing. It just needs to know the variable and then the objective function. So that variable is what we are going to give you six blade angles, as you can see, six angles. And then inside these six angles, you need to tell the minimum and the maximum. Like you need to give a range. Right? Uh, else it will take negative infinity to positive infinity as by default, but we don't want that. Like we, we, we want to give like specifically like what angles we need the uh, limits to be. So. And then like, and this is the external parameter setup. This is for communicating with Python. So basically repeat the same thing, what you did here in external parameter, all six parameters here. Um, and then, and then this is the important step where you say which geometry needs to be changed. For example, I need to change um, uh, uh, the impeller blades, right? That's, that's what I need to optimize. So I have like one, two, three, so six uh, surfaces, right? six surfaces needs to be updated every time. Basically, so that, then you need to tell all the all the geometries. Okay, these are the geometries, and uh, the, uh, and then this existing surface is the name in the Simerix file, and then uh, updated surface is the name of the STL file which uh, CF Turbo will generate. So inside the CF Turbo, you can select what your name should be. So that's how we know this is the name uh, this new STL is going to have. So it's just like basically just set it up um, like. Uh, just follow the tutorial. We have the tutorial, so we just follow it and then we set it up. 
and that's uh, pretty much it like you set up that and then other couple of other things that needs to be do from the python side which will be included in the support is uh, this like uh, you need to go to the script and then change the location of your uh, cf turbo executable where your uh, where you install the cf turbo and then the location of the working directory for example the working directory of uh, this one is this just copy and paste it inside this and uh, that's it that's uh, uh, that's how we set up the optimizer and then we just like go we go to the semantics pad and So, and then, and then you just like, you know, start the simulation. So, if you notice, let me show you one more thing. So, here there is a, a small window which shows the process what's happening. So, right now, CF Turbo is generating the design basically. Like, Simerix has already told what design should be generated, and then Simerix is uh, sorry, CF Turbo is generating the design in the background. Right now, it's like finishing the uh, model, and then it will generate the STL files. And then once it generated the STL file, we can wait for like a couple more minutes. Uh, so you will notice this simulation start running here. See, right now it's copying. See, the simulation has started running, and then you will see start seeing the residuals going down for the first design. And then in the meantime, you can also plot and uh, you know see how the efficiency changes. This is for the one first de uh, design of experiment run. So let me see. So yeah, we go to the model common, and I'll I'll show the efficiency here. So here we can clearly see that uh, you know efficiency is like slowly converging towards some number. Right. So this is just the first run. Uh, so it will take time to uh, do like twenty more runs. But it's not that much time. Like it will be done in like twenty minutes. Like each design, it only takes like you know one minute to run. Basically, that's all it takes. It's like since our communication is very fast, like you know, uh, like uh, we are using Python to communicate between these two softwares, and uh, and uh, our partner CF Turbo has done a great job, like like um, adding the Simmerix insight. So it's very fast. Uh, so I I think I will give it to Chirant for now. Uh, in the meantime, it will be running. Uh, so we can get back to this uh, in like 20 minutes or so. So okay, yeah. yeah thank you, Vignesh. Let me uh, start. We have uh, sh shown is um, how easy it is to set up the optimizer now in Semantics. So all you need to do is set up the variables that you want to optimize uh, in the optimizer, and then uh, you you set the Python path, the location of your files, and then. CF Turbo will give a design, Simex will run it and uh, give uh, CF Turbo back a feedback of what uh, is the change needed and that will make the change, give it back to Simex and all that process is automated. So uh, as the simulation runs in the background, let's quickly kind of visit some of this um, work that have been done with it so far and what validations we have obtained uh, to give you a kind of a flavor of what um, what are the advantages we are see seeing with this optimizer uh, inside the Simex. So I think this is a work that we did uh, uh, in 2022 when uh, we had the optimizer, but it was not inside Semerics, but it was using the same algorithm. So this is with Melling, um, a, a, pump, a pump company. So here the objective was to maximize the pressure rise. Um, so the parametric CAD was done inside CF Turbo. It's the same as what we do now. Um, <clears throat> so we kept the impeller diameter and the outlet with this, the same and uh, the duty condition, conditions are given as as here. So some of, the, uh, some of the variables that are listed here are the ones that are, uh, you know, tr we are trying to optimize. Uh, so the blade, uh, the hub shroud angles, uh, so uh, the wrap angle. So these are the, the standard ones. Typically, we try to kind of go after and we provide a range such that uh, it doesn't, I mean, it should be within some tolerance so that you don't have, uh, you know, some um, unphysical designs that, that come up. And also it needs to be such that you can manufacture this. Um, so based on this, I think the optimization was run and the baseline was having an efficiency of 57.8% uh, and a pressurize of X. So we normalized that. Um, 
and then the optimized design with six blades, uh, we see that it's about 57% efficiency with the pressure rise, which is what we, saw, we were optimizing for, jumped up by 31%. So now it's uh, it, it became 1.31x. Uh, with the seven blades, um, the efficiency is slightly improved, like 57.8 to 58.2, and the pressure rise um, improved by 41%. And with the eight blades, design three, we, we improve our efficiencies uh, by 4%, roughly, 61.3%. Uh, and then the pressure rise went up by 35%. And again, for optimized design four, we see for the eight blade, uh, it's it's about 51%. The efficiency was lower, but the pressure rise is still higher. So uh, so we optimized the blade shape for six, seven, eight number of blades uh, for a given impeller size. So this was what we we published in 2022. I think the, the plot here kind of gives an idea. So the baseline design was here and their target was here. So they said they want to improve their uh, the pressure rise essentially, and they're looking at a target of here. And then after we optimize it, this, these were the results that, that we got. Uh, but uh, as we published the paper, they had not done the testing. After that, they had done the testing and actually the test quite uh, collaborate quite well with what we our simulations break. So they did the prototype uh, based on our optimized results. They built the prototype and they, they, they tested it and they, they did see that the improvement, improvement efficiency. So they went above their design uh, requirement basically. So this was kind of a, let's say a pat in the back for us in terms of uh, how our optimizer was performing in terms of how, how valid the designs were and how much better it was in terms of the output that they they are desired to obtain basically. Uh, so the other one is something that we are yet to publish. We're kind of working on it, but um, just for this oil pump, uh, we know that noise is a big uh, problem in terms of uh, oil pumps. So for example, this zero to pump, the design of this groove plays a big role in uh, how much noise typically you produce. So I think here it was uh, objective was to minimize the pressure ripple. So the way we were doing it was we were looking at the first harmonic uh, of the pressure ripple, and we wanted to minimize that first harmonic. And if we do that, then the the pressure ripple could be reduced. And what we were trying to, uh, in terms of the design, what we were uh, going after was this groove design basically. So we parameterized that design, and uh, we look at for example, the inner radius, the outer radius, uh, and also the angle of this groove. And we try to, to reduce or, or play with those parameters to find out how much we can reduce this uh, first harmonic to reduce the noise. So as you see here, we have the red curves, which is the DOE, and then the blue ones are the optimization. So we have few DOE points, and then we run the optimizer, and we see that the optimizer actually produces quite a lot of uh, points with uh, lower first harmonic basically meaning that the pressure pressure ripple would be reduced so if you look at one of those points you analyze that the baseline design you will see that the outlet pressure is uh, the ripple is something like this and after optimization uh, you see that the pressure ripple kind of um, one of the optimization points the pressure ripple kind of reduced dramatically the amplitude of the the pressure ripple has reduced so this is something that we are still working to publish um, here. This is this is done with the tutorial model so we can show it out. But uh, the paper that we are working together with another company is something that we'll soon publish. And this is something that we can, um, again, gain confidence in uh, how how our optimizer is helping reduce the, no uh, the noise inside this pump. The, the third one is uh, optimization of centrical pump for Franklin Electric. This is something that uh, we published now in 2023 at the ASME, JSM, JSME conference uh, in the fluid engineering division. Uh, this is by Dr. Huiding and Dr. Chen Jai Wang from our side. Um, so this was the baseline design. Um, so this was essentially like a, a multi-stage pump. Um, so we take this multi-stage pump. So this is the initial design and we try to, to run this uh, simulation. Actually, as we run the simulation, we noticed that if you look at the, the velocity field, there is um, a recirculation zone that you can see here um, near the blade. So out of the bat, it's kind of obvious that there is um, some, let's say, uh, efficiency uh, sort of downside in, in this pump where the efficiency probably will not be very good because of this type of recirculation behavior that you see. 
so we kind of run the baseline pump and compare that with the simulation data. So this is the normalized head per stage compared uh, with res normalized head per stage plotted with respect to normalized flow rate. And the, the black line is the experimental data. The single stage, uh, if you run single stage because we are assuming a uniform inlet and uniform outlet, uh, your predictions will be typically slightly off, but if you read, reach, uh, run the multi-stage and take the result for the second stage, for example, you'll probably get better, better predictions in which is what we see. If you run the three-stage MRF, we see the curve is slightly underpredicted, uh, but if you run transient, you, you get a pretty good predictions with, with respect to test data. So we are slightly over the test data, which you would expect because we don't consider the frictional losses and other losses that uh, typically is there in reality. So over prediction is, is what you would expect. And we are we are pretty much uh, getting what the test was showing in terms of this baseline result. And if you look at the efficiency, uh, again, um, if you look at the three stage MRF, it's slightly lower on the efficiency here. Uh, with the transient, we get a pretty good comparisons with what the testing efficiency was for this uh, multi-stage pump. So now for the optimization, we parameterized that uh, baseline model in CF Turbo. So this model was parameterized in CF Turbo. And then uh, for optimization, we use 21 parameters. Uh, we just show here 11 key parameters that were used. Uh, and uh, we are running optimization using one stage study state. So our assumption here is that we run MRF with one stage and whatever design improvements we will get, we will verify that with the three stage transient simulation. So uh, because MRF is much faster to run and also one stage is faster to run compared to three stage. So we do that and then we can verify our findings using the three stage transient simulation. So here uh, we are doing 50 DOE runs and 110 optimization runs. Excuse me. It's about 15 minutes per run on uh, 20 core workstation. Uh, so the workstation details are given here. So right on the right, you see um, some of the results. So you can see the simulation run and then the efficiency that it's produced. So you see some changes in the design and according to the efficiency changes, and this is what the optimizer kind of throws out uh, as it's as running the simulation, basically. So this is a plot of the single stage efficiency with respect to the simulation runs. So the first 50 points um, are essentially the DOA runs. And based on the DOA runs, the optimizer kind of chooses what points it wants to run, and it wants to kind of get to the highest efficiency possible. So you see like, uh, as it's running, immediately it kind of goes to the higher efficiency locations and it, it's throwing out some designs which are pretty good and goes, explores some more and then comes back and produces some more designs which are quite good. And uh, it keeps doing that. It keeps exploring, uh, but it, it always comes back to give us something that is uh, quite good in terms of uh, the efficiencies that we are looking at. So now if you look at the optimized design uh, and look at the flow pattern, right? So one, one thing you can see the wrap angle is kind of higher now for this optimized design. And also if you look at this flow field, it's is much more, um, let's say it's, it's more fully developed, less of recirculation. So if you compare the previous design where you see a lot of recirculation uh, inside here uh, near the blades, you, you see that it's dramatically reduced now in terms of this optimized design. And uh, if you look at uh, the one of the optimized design, so what what are the efficiencies we are uh, gaining? Is essentially we get an eighteen percent or thirty one percent in terms of efficiency gain, uh, and we get a twenty four percent in terms of the head gain. Um, so these are results based on the three stage transient simulation at the design point. So head went from one times x to twenty four times x, and then efficiency went from fifty seven percent to seventy five percent basically. Um, so if you look at the performance, um, so now essentially we are at the baseline uh, curve, of the experiment and the, our three stage result was here. And now if you look at the three stage transient results for the optimized design, we are, we are much higher basically. And uh, the same thing, um, you see the baseline design is here for the efficiency and now the optimized design is, is much higher in terms of the efficiency. So uh, the paper, as, as was published, uh, we didn't have the results of the prototype um, of the optimized design, but they had made the prototype design and they had tested it, and we just got her uh, got back the results. And actually, the results look pretty good. So this is the test data. Um, actually, they tested the optimized design, and you can see the test data is here. So as we were predicting, our efficiencies. Uh, 
So the, I'm comparing the MRF of the simulations, CFT and the transient of the simulation. And as we had predicted, the efficiency will be, or, or the head will be higher. And we do see that in testing as well. So the test does kind of align with our CFT predictions. So they did improve their head quite dramatically from the baseline. And as well as the efficiencies, they have improved. Um, so now their efficiency sits at around 70%. Um, and previously, if you guys recall, the efficiencies of their baseline design was sitting at 60%. So this was the experimental data. So they've, they are now at 70%. So based on the optimizer, uh, pro providing some inputs. So they had optimized, uh, create the optimized design and they have tested it and they have improved their efficiencies quite dramatically. So, so again, this is another uh, verification study where we are seeing whatever uh, our optimization is showing as well as the CFD is uh, telling is, is kind of being seen in, in reality. So, yeah, so I'll stop here with the validation cases. Um, I'll hand it back again um, to... Hi, so, so if you remember the, we started the simulation at around like 1057, uh, so, between two um, you know designs it only took two minutes basically like we have 20 designs to run right so it's actually running in the background as you can see these new files are being created right in front of us and then these are the stl surface which cf turbo gives every a design change and simulix is reading it and then you know creating a bunch of design files these are the grid files and then the result files of designs so we have run 12 designs there are eight more designs to go so as you can see, the difference between these two designs is like two minutes. This and this is like two minutes. So uh, like, but the but yesterday I ran the result myself. So like we can look at that because it's going to take another like um, eight minutes to run the, uh, eight more designs, something like that. So here you can see like you know uh, last night I ran and then like twenty designs are there. So let's so these results will be you can find the uh, results in this. Uh, uh, text file like uh, the blade angles get chosen by the optimizer in every design change and then the um, efficiency the objective function is efficiency if you remember that's what we picked uh, and then this valid valid means valid one means it's valid uh, you know uh, the design changes are like valid if it's zero means then it didn't work this uh, cf turbo didn't generate a new stl file that's what it means uh, but yeah, but lucky for us, everything is worked out well. Uh, like you know, the the CF Turbo is able to generate the design which we uh, which optim CF uh, like which Simerix optimizer is telling it to. So, so it also it also depends on the user's uh, experience. Like uh, like if you can if you give some random uh, angles, then it might not work. So it needs it comes with the experience as well. Like the which uh, para, the minimum and the maximum angles uh, which you can give. So now let's look at the, I already made a plot. Okay. I already made, uh, maybe I can make a quick plot right in, right in here. Just copy it and then I just put it in the Excel. And then I'm going to create a plot between this and this number and the objective function. Make it a scatter. Yeah. So as you can clearly see, like first zero to ten, um, uh, it's the DOE, so it's a very random. And then after ten to twenty, uh, that's where our optimizer comes and like tries to optimize it. Um, as you can clearly see, it's slowly trying to optimize. And then the, I think the uh, the highest value is is probably this one. Right? I think it's this one. It's fifteenth. Uh, 15th uh, run is the highest one. So let's see how the highest, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, efficiency point looks like. So for that, you just simply open the project file again. And then here you can load all the results. You can actually see what's going on here. Like say 15th design is what we found being the highest, right? We just go and open it and then see how the blade design looks like. Right? See the blade design looks like something like this. Here we didn't uh, worry about the head. Uh, the head probably could be a bit lower, but the point is we only optimize the efficiency, right? So if you want to retain the head also, like if you want the head to be a certain value, you can add as a, add it as a constraint. 
new constraint you can play click s and then here you can like you know add a new constraint saying like my head should be at least you know greater than or equal to at least some number if you give that then like you know uh, simmerix will know okay this design is not the best design probably because it will have a lower head uh, so so those uh, those things also can be added like you know right now we only did um, what we optimize the efficiency we didn't say anything about the head so this head could probably even be lower but the point is like it's easy to set up and then you can do whatever constraint you want here like any constraint you can even manually create any other parameter and then try to like you know give a constraint there as well so now let's uh, try and create a section plane then see how that looks like So I'm going to put it to Z. I'm just going to move it a bit. Just to see how the pressure field looks like. Yeah. So you can just basically study it. So now you plot it for one, right? So now let's see the worst performing um, case. Probably say if you want to see like, uh, like, okay, okay, this. What's happening? This number, the uh, seven, right? Seventh design. If you want to see what's happening there, like why is it so low? Then if you want to study that, you can just go and load that result seven, right? You can just like study like back to back designs. So basically, you did like run like uh, twenty uh, designs in like what, like thirty minutes probably, uh, and then you can you can study all these designs. Like and you you don't need to be like you know looking babysitting it. It just does it automatically. Uh, only thing you need to make sure is like, you know, setting up the Python paths and then like, you know, um, uh, and somebody else asked the question about uh, like, do you need to change the uh, Python script every time? I mean, uh, sometimes, yes, you need to change it. Um, uh, if you want to optimize a different parameter, you need to optimize, uh, you need to change the Python script. For example, let me open the Python script right now. And then I'll show you what's actually going on inside the Python script. Right, so we have six uh, variable that needs to be optimized, right? So that's what we give names here, and then like it opens the batch file and it uh, you know automatically changes those uh, um, numbers inside the batch file, and then run the execute the batch file to create the new design. That's what's happening. So right now it's the blade angles, right? Somebody was asking about the eye diameter and all those things. That also you can add it here, like. Like there is a key that if you open the batch field, it will be very clear. Like you know, you just need to change this uh, variable uh, to uh, you know um, the variable which you want to optimize. Right now, it's beta one is the angle the, um, um, which you are trying to optimize. So instead of that, you can put a high diameter or, or something that it, which you when you open the batch field, you can clearly see that. Let's try and open the batch field. See here, you can clearly see that right, like. Okay. Like blade, a blade, a angle leading edge, and then um, you know you can see that. So that, that's a beta one value, right? So that's what, so you just need. There is a certain syntax which you need to follow, just like which is all will be all well documented. We can give that to you. So you just need to go in and then just change that particular line, and then you will be able to change the blade angle leading edge, and then the beta two is this. Uh, and so, yeah, of course, you need to like uh, change the Python script according to your need. But uh, again, like you just need to do it once. And then, like, once you do it once, and then you can run like hundreds of thousands of runs, you can like, you know, run uh, with that Python script um, until you get the best design. So, and after, the, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's from my side. Um, Okay, so uh, if you go to that design that you just loaded with uh, lower efficiency, I uh, just want to make sure. Yeah, so yeah, I think you can see here a lot of recirculation, low velocity, low pressure areas. So yeah, so that's why this is one of the lower performing designs, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, maybe we can come back to you if people have questions. Let me start sharing again and uh, finish the rest of the portions and then. We can get the questions answered. Um, so we, yeah, I can share my screen again. So you can see uh, we did the demo now with the results shown. Uh, we'll have a webinar coming up uh, on January 10th, Wednesday. Uh, I will talk about cavitation perform predictions using Simex MP plus. And uh, yeah, and I think now the floor is open for any questions. So please feel free to uh, put your questions in the chat window uh, if you have. 
uh, you know, questions that come up in the future. If you want to ask us to, to kind of do you, do you guys a demo of one of your pumps or keep it, uh, in terms of optimizer, you want to use it, uh, please feel free to contact us. So you can reach me at cs at simerics.com. Uh, phone number is 2485133200 with extension 263 or you can reach Vignesh at vj at um, I'll stop sharing and we'll address the questions that come up. So the first question was uh, from Ben. I think uh, Vignesh addressed that briefly. Does the Python file need to be updated if other parameters are, parameters are to be used in the optimization such as impeller outer diameter, eye diameter, impeller width? Yes, the Python file needs to be updated. So right now the Python file contains the, uh, essentially the parameters that we are optimizing. And of course, if the parameters change, you need to update the Python file, but uh, our support is unlimited and we will be helping you guys uh, the entire way. So if you guys don't have the time to sit and modify the Python, you can just send it to us. We'll modify it based on your requirements and send it back to, send it back to you. And, um, that that will be the easiest way to do it. But I think if you guys are familiar um, or become uh, familiar with the process, then it's it's not going to be very hard to change. It's just uh, uh, just changing the names inside it. So it's it's not a very sophisticated process. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I I don't have anything um, mm -hmm. to say. But if anyone has questions about how the process flow works, I can uh, talk about more in detail because I know I was very brief. Uh, we can talk about it more if somebody wants. Yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe you can share and show what, so you're running in the optimizer again, right? You already ran it yesterday. Is it giving similar points? Just, uh, you can plot whatever you have so far, maybe since we have a little bit of time. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So this is the finished one. This is the one that's currently going on right now. So as you see here, let me open this text file. Uh, I'm going to open with this editor where it will update. Like when it updates, you can see. So I think it is done. I think it's done. Yeah, it looks like it's run 20 points yeah. already. Yeah, it's done 20 points. So let's just copy this and then put it in a new. So as you see, we we just started it uh, 20 minutes ago, 25 minutes yeah. ago at 10.57. So it's already done uh, running. So we ran like 20 points. Of course, you can yeah. run a little bit more. It's but same. Uh, okay. Same yeah. Time, so same. yeah, yeah. So we can we can clearly like you know, subtract the difference between the time, right? I mean, 22 minutes and then we start at 10.57. So it's basically yeah. uh, 20. Yeah, some, 25, minutes. Only 25 minutes, yeah. Uh, 25 minutes is what it took to run 20 designs. I mean, of course, this is a smaller model and everything uh, like that. Yeah, but I think uh, typically we have like this pump models, which are not that big. And even yes. if you run three stage or something, uh, you still have only like 2 million cells with yeah. 20 cores. You should be able to run it within, um, yeah, within probably uh, yeah. a couple of hours, basically. Yeah, like probably 100 points you can run. So. Yeah, I think that's the power of uh, you know, doing the optimization inside the CFT software. So you do both uh, rapidly, so you can kind of get um, a good estimation of your improved designs uh, quite quite fast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, this is where uh, this is what mainly we wanted to show all of you um, the capability of this new V6 version. Um, so. Yeah, so one of the questions that come in right now from uh, uh, Wistman was how many cells did you use for your tutorial? So how many cells were there in your tutorial model? Yeah, I'm checking. Now. So we have uh, 369,000 369, uh, uh, cells. Yes. So I have run simulations like in this computer where I'm running uh, like 1 million cells. It, it, every design point takes only like five minutes to run 
or four minutes to run. That's all it takes. Like even like 1.5 million cells um, take five. So if you have like hundreds under design, like you just like, you know, you can just set it up and then you can go away like for the weekend or something. Like if you have a bigger models, just set it up in the Friday and then you Monday, you can view the, view the results. Like it's uh, and you don't need to babysit it. That's the key part. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, typically for like say uh, this 300,000 cell model, it's pretty fast. Even for a two million cell model, it'll be typically like within a within a day, within a working day, you can get results and uh, get some designs. And also, what we notice is when once we start running uh, after the DOA points, immediately the optimizer kind of uh, moves towards your um, let's say improved points. Uh, you will notice that we notice that very regularly. It will kind of give you some points that are very good in terms of uh, your objective function, like it, it's towards the optimized range, it'll go again, explore some. So you will get a very good feel immediately as to whether your design can be improved or whether we're getting uh, improved efficiencies or improved head or whatever you're trying to chase. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? We have a couple of minutes. Uh, still open for questions. If you have any, uh, we can take it. Uh, like I said before, if you have something come up later, just feel free to email us at uh, cs at uh, We can we can address it there as well. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, we're almost there. So closing thoughts. Thank you for attending our webinar. Um,